Welcome to the show. My guest today is Jason Corey, the Senior Director for Emerging Technologies at Red Hat. Jason, welcome to the program. Jason, good to see you. Let me set a little bit of context for our discussion today. It's been almost four years since the Office of Management and Budget launched their code.gov platform where agencies can post open source and promote reuse. While this definitely wasn't the beginning of the use of open source across government, a recent survey shows that interest in using secure community-based code obviously is growing. The survey respondents from the 25 largest agencies found, generally speaking, open source provided a way to build community around the software, to create development efficiencies, to demonstrate competencies, and to view code as being beneficial to the public. Now, at the same time, respondents also continue to have concerns about open source. These included areas around scope alignment, changes in work practices, risk avoidance, specifically cybersecurity risk, and the need for permissions to use the code themselves. Now, despite these continued what we'll call culture hesitations about open source, there are plenty of examples from NASA to the Smithsonian Institution to, to the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau to the Defense Department who are finding value from using open source software. And now with the surge and the acceleration of the move to the cloud, open source can play actually a bigger role for all agencies. And that's where our guest comes in and, you're gonna, and he's gonna tell us how that works. Once again, my guest is Jason Corey, the Senior Director for Emerging Technologies at Red Hat. Now, Jason, let me just start at the surge for telework, the surge for cloud services. It all comes back to the coronavirus pandemic and how agencies have been able to react, transform and, and continue to meet mission. Just initially, what are you seeing from your customers? How has the digital transformation, IT modernization, whatever we're gonna call this, really been impacted by, by, the, by the pandemic? Yeah, I no, appreciate it again. Uh, I hope everybody's safe these, these crazy times. So I think, you know, the observations we're seeing across both the federal and state and local markets are, are really around acceleration of, of projects that really clients wanted to uh, begin prior to the pandemic that because now of things like telework and, you know, the, the need to do things like auto scale uh, are really just being accelerated. So I think, I mean, the obvious ones that are, have been across the news are just you know, things like cloud technologies and some of the, you know, scalability and both flexibility of those of those offerings. And I think the other the other thing we're seeing a lot of is, is automation, right? I think people recognize now that, you know, the more you can automate uh, technologies to do things on their own, the, the quicker you can adapt. And in these times, you know, adaptation is really, really the key. So, you know, I think there's there's been projects that have been held up <clears throat> that now are, are moving much faster. And I think there's even some of the cultural uh, points you, you mentioned during the open. I think those are being broken down too, right? Is, you know, things like security and, you know, what are, what are things just like, you know, tele, telemedicine and, uh, you know, telework present in that construct uh, are really being kind of viewed a little differently because the risk reward ratios has shifted. You bring up an interesting point about the risk reward ratio. And I think that's really important. I think one of the things the pandemic has done, you know, specifically initially, and then, and then into the, the next few months as, as people adapted is, okay, what's the reward? How can we make sure we get to applications, make sure we get the data we need, make sure that we are doing the things we need to do to meet mission versus, well, well, if, we're not, if we take that off-prem or if we, well, if we don't move that to the cloud, w w that could hurt us in some way and the security risk is too high. Do you think that's been among the biggest changes is that re-looking at the risk reward ratio? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think when you, when you really think about the decisions that all of our government clients have to make, I mean, there's always really strong intentions, right? They want to do the best things for citizens, for the mission, um, but they have challenges. I mean, you know, budgets are, are a big piece of that. And, you know, the, the risk reward ratio when it comes to that really is, is a focal piece, right? So I think what, what we've seen is that whether it's, you know, in the DOD space or in the civilian market or in, or in state and local, um, people recognize that hey, we have to forward invest in some of these capabilities uh, because, you know, who knows what tomorrow is going to hold. I mean, uh, and, I, and I do think sometimes when you look at that risk reward ratio and even something as simple as moving to the cloud, you know, it's costly, it's disruptive, it, you know, there's a lot of change on the process side that has to happen. Um, but again, the benefits you get of doing that are, you know, your unemployment website will auto scale, right? When you go from 6,000 requests to 313,000 requests a day, which is some of the things you know, we're seeing in some of our customer bases. So, you know, I think it's a positive, um, but at the same time, we're also really cognizant of, you know, there, there's risk that it gets introduced when you try and go faster. And, you know, that's, that's really the role Red Hat's tried to play within that ecosystem, balancing the two. Let's talk a little bit about that, that balance, because I think one thing that, 
as agencies move to modernize their applications, move to the cloud, that risk reward and the balance of it is really key. And I think, as you talked about something that Red Hat tries to do, open source can, can play a big role in that risk reward balance. Talk maybe a little bit about how you're seeing customers and or people in the public sector starting to use open source to balance that risk reward ratio. Yeah, I mean, so when, when we talk about open source, I like to, to frame it in three, three different ways because open source is, is kind of like the term cloud, right? It's very, very broad. So I think about it as both, you know, the natural thing people think about is the development model, right? So the way software is created via an open source development model. Uh, and then the output of that is oftentimes, right, technology that's used across the enterprise now. So, you know, it's the development model, it's a type of technology. And then increasingly over the last six to seven years, we've seen a shift in, in, in customers of really, it's also a way to organize and it's a leadership construct, right, for this new kind of information age where adaptability is important and, you know, voicing of ideas and, you know, being transparent uh, becomes more and more important. So, so I think, you know, with each of those, uh, Red Hat ha has tried to, to play a role, right? So obviously on the open source development model, we're, we're a 27 year old company now that really, you know, helped to, to, to found the, you know, concept around open source. I mean, people, most people still associate Red Hat with Red Hat Enterprise Linux, but you know, as technologies across, you know, cloud, virtualization, AI have sprung up, you know, the majority of those innovations are coming from open source development, open source communities. And that's had a natural shift for really kind of what the vendor community looks like right now, right? Like, you know, in 1993, we were one of the only open source enterprise uh, software companies, but now every major uh, vendor that government clients will work with have an open source practice or an open, sh uh, open source uh, capability. So I think, you know, that technology has really, really kind of come a long way. And then on the organizational side of it, that, that is an area where, you know, we believe open source applies to areas outside of technology, whether it's, you know, medicine or, uh, you know, education. So, you know, our CEO has written books around how to organize around the concepts for open. And I think when you go back to really understand trends around agile development and, uh, you know, they're very similar, right? So I think what's, being, what's happening over the last five or six years is that concepts that have been in, in open source development communities for a long time are now being applied to the marketing department and the operations team and how we do logistics, right, in, in different, different ways. So, and I think in all three of those, the development model, the technology, and you know, the broader discussion around mo organizational models, you know, we've, we've played a really active role. I love the analogy you made around Agile and DevSecOps and things like that, where a lot of the practices in open source now are being just moved into these other areas. And, and I think that's why maybe the risk reward ratio is starting to change because, because I think agencies are, are more comfortable understanding, well, we've, like we had success with Agile, we brought people in, we brought in the user, we've talked about user journeys. And in many ways, that's what open source, when the development side, the tech side was all about, was get more brains in the room to help solve the problem. Do you think that's why in some ways, and again, I use this quite often, the silver lining in this pandemic is this acceleration of digital transformation that they're able to do it fast because there was an urgency, but also there's this comfortability that has developed because of these other concepts like you described. Yeah, no, I, I think that's 100% true. And, and I think, you know, you can see it on even things like Super Bowl commercials, right, where like developers are prominently kind of showcased. But, but I think, and I had a conversation uh, with my son this morning, who's, who's 12, and he was asking me questions about technology. And I, I was explaining to him, you know, with DOD, we, we work on a lot of mission systems and weapon systems. And he's like, well, why does Red Hat talk to people that build missiles or, 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 or tanks or any of these things? Like when they're and I, and I said, well, because all of those are, are software, right? Like, yes, there's, you know, a certain, um, a certain level of, of, of hardware and, and weapons, weaponry and, and so forth. But, but everything that we touch now is software. And that really has, I think, driven, really start to be understood. But that's what's driven sort of the rise of, like, how agile can be applied to these. And because such great software has been developed via these, uh, via these same methodologies, now people are really opening up the, uh, the aperture of, how could it be applied to other other areas of uh, of the organization um, to really drive in that adaptability? Uh, and I think that's a really important term, right? Is how can you be more adaptive and be faster? So most of what we see around you know our technology, like we deliver platforms, 
pr pr predominantly, right? And then we help customers build uh, capabilities on top of those. But a lot of them are about increasing data-driven decisions, right? Or increasing like speed to capability with, you know, fielding of, of, a, of a certain capability, both in the civilian or the DOD markets or uh, you know, state and local. So, so I think it's, it, you got to kind of peel it back to figure out like, well, yes, you need these platforms. And I like to describe them as like platforms for progress, right? Like the platforms by themselves don't do anything. <laughs> it's about, you know, how do they help you make progress in the specific, you know, uh, mission area that you really, you know, are trying to drive that speed. Let's talk maybe a little bit more about what you're starting to see in the use of open source across government. My introduction, obviously, I, I highlighted some of the, the concerns and specifically the code.gov effort, which is obviously is almost four years old, launched in November of 2016. But as I mentioned, open source is not new. It's not like all of a sudden someone at OMB, the federal CIO at the time, Tony Scott said, oh, let's do open source. It's been used by DOD and others for, for, for decades. Give me a sense of where we are today. What some of the trends you're seeing around the use of open source software and technology? Yeah, so so I think the simplest way to describe it is like clients now view open source the same way they view COTS. And what I mean by that is they're not really they're not as concerned with like questions on security. Like I've been at Red Hat ten years, and you know prior to that I've worked in the DoD for a long time. When I first got to Red Hat, I spent most of my time kind of describing like why we believe open source is more secure and you know how it should be viewed on the same playing field as like you know proprietary cot solution that they uh, they may be looking at but i think it's shifted more now to hey we understand you know especially with companies like red hat that these products are very secure and they're very capable so it becomes more about the features and then the outcomes that they're really trying to get to um, so i think on the topic of open source in general that, that's where we are and that's a really really good place I think uh, more broadly, now they're trying to determine, you know, whether it's app modernization or, you know, moves to the cloud or different data initiatives, uh, because data really is kind of becoming the next, you know, the next focal point in my mind. Uh, and we're doing a lot of work there. But I think now it's about trying to apply these things together, right? So how do you take cloud and, you know, maybe some data technologies and what we're trying to do in an agency, like put them together to really build a capability quickly. So, and then the last thing we are seeing quite a bit of is people work with Red Hat, not just for the technology, they're very interested again in this sort of business model, this organization model, you know, how do you incentivize people in like a remote environment that maybe don't work for your company, right? All these are like very common things that Red Hat and open source communities have been doing for a long time. So a lot of the meetings I have with executives around the Beltway and a lot of our system integrator partners focus more around like the skills piece and how to organize and how to attract talent because, you know, that's really the, the, the secret ingredient these days. All right. Well, there's plenty more to dig out of there. We can even talk more about skill sets and how you organize around using open source principles after the break. First, we're going to take a quick break. You're listening to the discussion innovation and in government sponsored by Kerasoft on federal news network. <laughs> 